Now, the rest of the story. You guys can read that but the monitor is saying I'm going 6.3 miles an hour running 99.3 singulation which is exactly where I want to be if not just a tick more but 98 and above is awesome but I'm right at 99.8 zero percent skips 0.2 percent doubles my spacing quality is 99.7 percent I'm having a really hard time wrapping my head around the fact that this planter likes to go fast, like real fast. I'm used to going 4.8 miles an hour with the 46 and our previous setup, and anything faster than that, the singulation would just crater. This stuff is going in the ground the best it's ever gone in the ground. Um, by all... <laughs> By all reasoning, this should really be, even if I'm not getting a picket fence stand, which is, you know, what I'd really like, I mean, obviously, but this is literally gonna be the best stand we've ever had. And I'm actually covering 19.5 acres an hour. That's called letting the horses gallop. Uh, the 79 is working like a champ absolutely love it um diff lock and front wheel assist for some of these hills because of the full fertilizer tank um all the seed boxes were as full as i could get them to start on this field and i think we got all the bugs worked out of it so do that do that i didn't have the diff lock on Yes, I'm driving into the beans a little bit. I guarantee you those beans I'm running over, they just gained 10 bushel to the acre. You think I'm joking, but I'm not. So, it's the 7 16th. What is today? I don't think it really matters. It is the 17th. You guys probably can't see me. I'm talking quick because I don't have my battery charger. Uh, that's on the bench in the shed I got to grab before I move to the next farm but um hold on here I'm trying to line this up the best I can so we're gonna do that we're gonna do that uh, I shouldn't have done that I touched the steering wheel then go ahead and drop that down planters on the ground We've never really done it before. I mean, running that harrow before the planter putting corn in the ground. Uh, we even ran it before the planter doing our beans this year. Uh, leaves a better seed bed. Uh, I'm not worried about the ground crusting over quite so much. Uh, a lot of where our beans are coming up, it is pushing the ground up, keeping it up out of the way, and it's kind of crumbling out of the way, which is what I want to see. And we're kicking up dust. It's hazy out. You can thank Tyson, Northern Farmer, for that. I, I feel for the guy. Uh, he just sent uh, an Instagram video out earlier. Uh, I've seen his videos here where he's planting and you know, there's basically fire all around him. And that sounds absolutely terrible. And that's what they're calling for is drier weather going forward here with that El Nino. Uh, for us, I'm not really sure if that's good or bad at this point. I mean, the last few years where we were uh, in the La Nina, it was actually kind of fun to farm because we were actually drier. And now I've heard it both ways that switching over to uh, El Nino, it's supposed, I mean, I'm seeing articles saying hotter and drier. And I've also been told by a local that it means uh, wetter, more moisture. So generally it means better crops for the country, but 
as far as I know, pretty much everybody in this area had record crops last year. So does that mean just better crops going forward here yet? I don't know. For us and everything that we've done, we're doing, um, the stressing and the teeth grinding, trying to get this thing up and running. Uh, as far as thinking that a roller chain planter and going back to what we had would outpace this, I don't believe so. Uh, the seed savings that we have, um, getting the seed, all the seed, right in the ground, right where it needs to be. Um, the guidance and all that stuff, as much as um, the old timers uh, cuss about it, it's worth it. I wholeheartedly believe it's worth it. I mean, if you're willing to beat your head against the concrete running a, an older machine, simply because you don't want to deal with the technology, not because it's not something that wouldn't work for your operation because don't get me wrong uh, there's there's operations where they're only running 50 100 acres of, of crops total i could see why these new systems wouldn't make any sense i wholeheartedly do it's just when you're running any number amount of acres this stuff pays off quickly um low grain prices the way they are right now and still being able to get, setting yourself up, nothing's guaranteed until it goes across the scale in the fall, um, but setting yourself up for the best yields you can get, sounds a lot better than spraying and praying and just throwing some seed out there. And I mean, you get overlaps and your point rows are planting into each other where you got corn on top of corn, you know, your rows are intersecting seen it uh, it's a yield robber um, only planting what needs to be planted where it needs to be planted um, pays bigly I mean I really don't feel like getting into a debate with anybody because at this point you know people are gonna do what they want to do and they'll say whatever they have to to justify it I mean going through and replacing oh gosh what was it over 30 roller chains a year on this thing with our old setup. And then also having to worry about bearings, uh, sprockets that were getting worn out and hooking. That was the issues we had last year in the second half of, of planting. Uh, as far as electronics go, the mice aren't eating your wires. What I gotta worry about is, oh, they're the what, electric motors? Valve bodies? for the hydraulic downforce, maybe a bad hose. I mean, if you want a good crop or the best crop you can get, I think it's worth putting the money out there and and swinging for the fence. So being a, a successful farmer isn't just about doing a great job planting or harvesting or man, uh, marketing your crops or dealing with insurance or picking your seed hybrids. It's all of that. And that's, I guess that's uh, one of the big challenges that we all gotta deal with. But I'm planting this farm at 34,000 seeds per acre. I've planted up to, uh, the field I started on last night was 38. But 99.8, 99.6 singulation, 0.2% skips, 0.3% doubles, 99.6% spacing quality, and the meters are running at 30 revolutions, revolutions per minute. I'm having a blast. When everything's working, I'm having a blast. I'll be running all night tonight because it is the 17th of May. We had every all of our corn in uh, the 19th of May last year. My goals right now are to have everything planted by the 20th. And that is a very real possibility. Seems how I'm going, well, at 19 acres an hour versus the 12 acres an hour before. And that's with the wind in my back and an awful lot of luck, to be completely honest with you. And I still wasn't seeing this kind of singulation where with the finger pickups. Oh, come on. 
Ain't gonna do it. Sorry. Thing is, I'm picky. I want to have this planted properly, and I don't want any of those hooks going into my my out of my headlamps. And that is something I'm doing too. Before the camera dies, can you guys tell I haven't planted a headland here? This is part of it. So I've actually gone through and I'm just planting the main body of this field. I have the headlands turned off. So there's 60 feet on the outside of this that is not being planted. So I'm planting the inside. And then what's gonna happen is I can go through and do headlands. And then look at that. I can go through and plant my headlands. So all these areas that I'm doing my circles and turning around in, I'll be planting into that versus driving over top and smashing in and compacting uh, my freshly planted uh, corn seed. So, I don't know. A lot of this video that I'm doing, it's not for farmers. It really isn't at this point. It's for everybody that is in town that doesn't understand, doesn't get to see this kind of stuff. Um, the different tools that we use to try to be profitable at the end of the year. And that's the other unfortunate uh, reality of it is you can do everything right and still fail and still turn uh, a red number in at the end of the year when you balance everything out. It happens. But with an amazing year we had last year, it, it comes and goes. You can't expect amazing prices every single year because then what happens is, is all your inputs go up you know to the stratosphere and everything associated with farming will just goes up so we're making exactly the same we were before the prices went up it's just we're dealing with more dollars and less less actual income but it it's doing a nice job I'm happy so I don't know, I'm pretty sure this thing could do my taxes if I asked it to at least that's what it feels like after all that time working on it. I am making sure I'm getting it down, all the seeds down into moisture, which is really important because if we don't get much of any rain for doing the tillage and all that stuff we've had, it dries out that top layer, whoa, that top layer of, of soil. And if you're putting your corn seed down into dry soil, then you are hoping for rain. And as of right now, tomorrow night is the next chance of rain. It's not a very big chance, which I'm okay with that. Sunday was not a very big chance of rain and we got an inch and three tenths. The goal is to be done the day after tomorrow or really dang close to it. Um, seeing the kind of yields we saw last year planting this late really isn't affecting my my opinions as far as thinking we're, we're running super late in the year if it was may 25th i would probably be a lot more panicky and grumpy but we've already seen what last year did for us and waiting until the ground conditions were were appropriate i mean there's a lot of corn that's up out of the ground right now not ours but I'm okay with it not really being ours because planting into cold, crummy soil just to say that you got everything in early and the planters put away, I've been that guy too. And it, it's burned us also. So waiting, which is, is risky, everything we do is risky. Um, and giving the ground a chance to warm up as much as it really, as much as it really has at this point. Um, instead of waiting two weeks or a week or more for our corn seed, bean seed, to come up out of the ground, it's been a week and our beans were up and our corn really should be up within just a few days with the weather forecast they're calling for. I mean, nice and warm out really encourages that corn to get up out of the ground. Which is what I want. I don't want. I don't want it sitting in the ground for two weeks and sitting and stressing about crusting or having to replant. 
for my older viewers, you know full well how much I hate replanting. Replanting is just a recovery operation. Either you plant it right once, and that's it. Anything, anything more than that, and and why were you out there the first time, essentially? 